Guide to Read Percy Jackson and the Battle of Labyrinth Part 1 Orientation Percy Jackson attending a freshman orientation class at Good High School, where he encounters Rachel Elizabeth Dare. During the orientation, they discover that two cheerleaders are actually Mpuzai. Percy defeats one, but the other escapes. Percy and Rachel flee, and they meet up with Annabeth outside. They head to Camp Half-Blood. At camp, Annabeth goes to speak with Clarice in secret, while Percy explores on his own. He encounters Quintus and Mrs. O'Leary, the pet hellhound. Chiron takes Percy to Grover, and they attend a meeting of the Council of Cloven Elders. The Council gives Grover one week to find the lost god Pan, or his searcher's license will be revoked. Percy then rushes to clean his cabin before an inspection and meets his half-brother Tyson. That night, Percy witnesses an Iris message involving Nico Di Angelo speaking with a ghost about bringing Bianca back to life. Percy realizes Nico may come looking for him. The next day, Percy and Annabeth stumble upon an entrance to the labyrinth in the heart of the camp, which Luke may plan to use for an invasion. Part 2 Into the Labyrinth Annabeth, Percy, Grover, and Tyson embark on a quest to find Daedalus, the creator of the labyrinth. Inside the maze, they encounter shifting walls and confusing passageways. They reach a Roman-themed room where they meet Janus, who offers Annabeth a key. Before she can choose, they are saved by Hera, who grants them a wish. Annabeth wishes for a way to navigate the labyrinth. They leave the room and rescue the hundred-handed one, Briars, from camp in Alcatraz. Despite their attempts to convince him to join them, Briars declines. They continue their journey deeper into the maze. Throughout their journey, Percy has dreams about Daedalus, including the deaths of his son Icarus and his nephew Pedix. Part 3 The Triple G Ranch Percy and his friends encounter Nico at the Triple G Ranch and make a deal with Gerion to let them go if Percy cleans the stables. After Percy succeeds, they return to find their friends captured because the deal was not sworn upon the river Styx. Percy defeats Gerion with Hera's guidance and releases his friends. Nico refuses to join them but they summon the ghost of Bianca, who reveals she had been sending messages to Percy. Bianca asks Nico to forgive Percy and warns about holding grudges. Nico chooses to stay with Eurition for a while. Eurition offers to help them find Hephaestus, who can guide them to Daedalus' workshop, by giving them a spider automaton. In the labyrinth, they face a sphinx and meet Hephaestus. He agrees to help them if they investigate the invasion of his forges in Mount St. Helens. Grover senses the presence of Pan and splits from the group with Tyson. Percy and Annabeth discover the creatures using the forges and are attacked by telekines. Annabeth kisses Percy before fleeing, and Percy defeats the monsters with a water explosion, losing consciousness in the process. Part 4 Calypso Percy wakes up on the island of Ogygia and meets Calypso, a titan's daughter, who offers him immortality. Hephaestus reveals the truth about Mount St. Helens and gives Percy a hint to navigate the labyrinth. Percy decides to leave and promises to plant a sprig of moon lace for Calypso. Returning to camp, Percy finds it empty but is welcomed back. He tells Chiron and Annabeth his plan and they search for Rachel, who can navigate the labyrinth. They are captured by Luke's forces and brought to Antaeus Arena. Percy refuses to kill Ethan and defeats Antaeus through trickery. Percy summons Mrs. O'Leary to escape with Annabeth and Rachel, but Ethan leaves them shortly after. Part 5 Daedalus Workshop 
The group arrives at Daedalus' workshop and discovers Quintus is Daedalus himself. They learn that he is aiding Luke with Ariadne's string. Kelly, Minos, and enemy forces attack, but they are joined by Nico and Mrs. O'Leary. Daedalus urges them to escape using metal wings he created. Rachel helps them return to the labyrinth. They encounter the entrance to the Titan's palace, and Percy enters alone. Inside, he finds Luke fused with Kronos. Rachel interrupts and buys them time to escape. They reunite with Tyson and Grover and enter Carlsbad Caverns, where they encounter Pan. Grover reluctantly accepts the truth of Pan's death and receives a part of his essence. They exit the labyrinth and Rachel explains her connection to Pan. The group returns to camp on Pagazi. Part 6 The Battle of the Labyrinth The camp prepares for war as Kronos' army emerges from the labyrinth. Percy and Chiron have a brief conversation before the battle begins. The campers, along with Daedalus, Mrs. O'Leary, and Briars, fight valiantly. However, camp appears and turns the tide in favor of the enemy. Grover uses his panic-inducing abilities to send the monsters fleeing back into the labyrinth. Knowing the monsters will return, the demigods regroup. Daedalus sacrifices himself, destroying the labyrinth and saving the camp. Before his death, he gives Annabeth a laptop containing his unfinished work. The camp is safe once again. Later, Percy reconciles with Nico, who apologizes for his behavior. Percy offers Nico a place in camp, but Nico declines, stating that he belongs with the dead. Percy respects his decision and lets him go. As the summer comes to an end, Percy and Annabeth discuss the rest of her prophecy. Hera appears and is offended by their comments about her. She warns them of her memory of the insult and vanishes. Percy returns home to celebrate his birthday with his family. Poseidon visits and Percy confides in him about recent events. Poseidon reveals that Percy is his favorite son and gives him a sand dollar as a gift. Nico suddenly arrives, claiming to have found a way to defeat Kronos. Percy invites him inside for food and a conversation.